Praise the Lord and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to share the good news of the gospel with you today. You are in tune to Greg Jacobs Ministry Broadcast TV, and we are glad to be here. Um, share this broadcast that you are watching right now with a neighbor or friend. I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. Our information on how to contact us um, will be coming up soon. You should be able to uh, see that information. Our contact number is 312-801-4837. If you're ever in the Chicago land, you can please come by and visit us also at Fellowship of Believers. Um, I am the senior pastor at that ministry as well as um, the, minister, the minister of Greg Jacobs Ministry. And so today's lesson is very interesting because when I read this, you know, when, when the Holy Spirit gives you something to preach or to teach, it, it brings a conviction to you first because you want to make sure that if you are in violation of this word that you are doing the, the necessary things to uh, get yourself in order. And I found myself in this lesson today and we, we're going to go to the book of Proverbs chapter 1 starting at verse 24. And I believe we'll probably only make it to verse 30 today. And I want you to grab your Bible. And I'm going to be reading this out of New Living Translation. Where as we find out the attitude and the mindset of God, when we do not uh, listen to his call or we, or we do not respond to him correctly, you as parents, you know how you get a little aggravated when you keep calling your child's name over and over and over. And then they finally come and you say, didn't you hear me call you the first time? I called you five times. What's wrong with you, boy? What's wrong? You get frustrated because he should have responded. And so we're going to entitle this, Don't Ignore God. When he calls you, do not ignore the voice of God. Do not ignore God. Now you might say, well, you know, how important is that? Well, let's go to the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. Glory to God. King James will read it something like this. I'm going to read one verse in King James and switch over to New Living Translation. It says, because, King James, because I have called and ye refused and have stretched out my hand and no man regard. What do that mean? Let's go to the New Living Translation. I'm going to read a couple of verses for you. The Lord says, I call you so often, but you wouldn't come. I stretched out to you, but you paid no attention. Isn't that something? Verse 25. You ignored my advice and rejected the correction I offered. Ooh. Look at that. I call you so often. So the Lord is saying, I've been calling on you. You know, this is scripture the day you hear his voice, hearken not your heart. He said, I called you so often, but you wouldn't come. You wouldn't respond. I've been calling you by name. I've been calling you through situations. I've been calling you through other people. And what I wanted from you, you, you didn't read. Give me enough respect. To come see what I wanted. He said, I, then I reached out to you. But guess what? You too busy. You paid me no attention. My God. You paid me no attention. How aggravating it is when you try to talk to a person and they pay you no attention. He began to go on and says, you ignore my advice. Sometimes you give a person advice and it sounds like it's going to make you feel like it's going through one ear and coming out of another. <laughs> Sometimes you're giving your children advice, counsel, and then you look at the expression on their face and you say, did you hear me? This is what God is expressing in this lesson. Why is it so important that we do not ignore God? Somewhere deep in this lesson, we're going to find out the consequences of ignoring God. 
You ignore my counsel. You rejected the correction I offer. You know what, what, what my concern is a lot of times? It's that Christians or those who confess Christianity never want to be corrected by the Word of God. If God sent a teacher, if he sent a minister, if he sent a prophet, if he sent a pastor, if he sent a member of the church, if he sent a child to you, most people will say that you're trying to tell them what they're doing is a violation of God's word. They say, you can't judge me. You can't say anything to me. But you're not judging them. You're just repeating what the word of God says. You are carrying out the message, just like the mailman. All he's doing is delivering the package. But he said, you rejected the correction. A lot of Christians don't want to be corrected when they're wrong. They want to dance in church, shout, praise God. Some come and say, I want to get my word on, my praise on. I want somebody to prophesy to me. But what when the Lord is speaking, whether it's directly to your heart or indirectly to, through somebody else, and you reject the correction. You get mad. Sometimes, have you ever seen a person get mad when you try to bring correction? Not in bitterness, not in judgmentalism, but out of love. You know, as a teacher of the word of God, I, I, I do a disclaimer. I said, when I'm I said, listen, by no intent or means, I'm trying to harm you, defame you, degrade you, or offend you. I'm just here as a messenger delivering the word of the Lord. And so let me deliver this word. And if I didn't say that earlier, by no means necessary, I want to offend anyone. I am not here to judge anyone. I'm just here to deliver the word of God. The same word you got in your, your Bible also. Let's continue on. You reject the correction. Never reject the correction of the Lord. Do you know when the Lord is, is correcting us? He is not doing it to harm us. Just the same way, parents, when you bring correction or chastisement to your children. It's not, you're not doing it because you don't love them. You're doing it because you love them. And you don't want to see what you see about to happen to them. So you bring in chastisement, you bring in correction. Whom the Lord loveth, he, chast he chastises. He corrects. He chastens. If you are a true son or daughter of the Lord, he will correct you. He will chasten you. He don't want you to see you open up demonic doors or spiritual doors that demonic forces can come in and destroy your life. So he's always trying to bring a correction when we are in error. Don't ignore the voice of the Lord today. Let's continue going. Now verse 26 really got me. I want you to real, look in your Bible in verse 26. I don't care what version of the Bible you read it out of. King James, New King James Living, uh, New Living uh, Testament, uh, NIV, verse 26 will stop you in your tracks. Because why? Verse 26 is going to begin to talk about the consequences of what? How he called us and we didn't answer. How he reached out to us, but we didn't pay him no attention. How we ignored his advice. How we rejected his, cor his correction that he offered. So of all that rejection, when God's telling a person, I want you to get back into your rightful place. I want you to get saved. I want you to repent. I want you to come back to me. I want you to turn your life around. I want you to forgive. I want you to let go of that bitterness. I want you to step forward and go forward in ministry like I told you. And stop making the excuse that your family is blocking you or your, or your husband or your wife. Because they get on your nerve. You can't do it. God says, I want you to go forward. But you're not listening to my advice. You're not listening to me. So verse 26 says this. It gives us the consequences. It says, so I will laugh. That's what God is saying. I will laugh when you are in trouble. I believe King James used the word calamity. I will laugh when you are in trouble. I will mark you when disaster 
overtake you. Wow. King James said, where fear come on you, which means disaster overtake you. I will mark you. You will say, help me, Lord. And I will say, help me, Lord. What is he? He's marking you. He, he's, he, he is not going to respond to you. Why? He's laughing. One of the things I don't want God to do, I want, I want him to laugh at my enemies. My God. But I don't want him to laugh at me when I'm in trouble. Why is God laughing at people today when they're in trouble? Because he was reaching out to them in the time and the season, and they ignored him. Some people say, oh, I don't got time for that. You know, right now, I don't got time to be in church. I don't get time to be working in the ministry. I don't got time to be going out here winning souls. I'm working two jobs a day. I'm trying to take care of my family. I'm trying to get ahead. I'm trying to make that money. And then when you do have calamity, when you do get in trouble, God said, I'm laughing at you now. Why? <clears throat> Where's your money now? <laughs> Where's your money at that, that causes you to miss what I was saying? Go get it now and tell your money to save you. Where's that family that you will never come into my presence and spend time with me? Where they at? Tell them to get you out of your disasters. Look at verse 27. They get worse. Verse 27 says, When calamity overtake you like a storm, when disaster engulf you, and whew, an anguish and distress overwhelm you, when you cry for help, I will not answer. Y'all got, you got to go to the book of Proverbs chapter 1. Right there in the first chapter, God is saying, you don't want to ignore me because when you get in trouble, I'm going to ignore you. You're going to reach out to me one day, but I'm going to stand back because I reached out to you at first and you didn't respond to me. I called you, and you ignored me. So now I'm going to ignore you. Harden. Don't get hardened in your heart. When God calls you, answer God. When the Holy Spirit begins to deal with your heart, answer the Lord. When you go to a church service and you know that minister, that teacher, that preacher is preaching a message, and that message is touching you, repent to God. Don't ignore God. Don't override the Holy Spirit when he's telling you not to do certain things, when he's telling you not to go certain places. Don't override the voice and the, and, and the conviction of the Holy Spirit. So he says, yeah, calamity is going to overtake you like a storm. Disaster is going to engulf you one day. Anguish and distress is going to overwhelm you one day. And when that day comes, in verse 28, you're going to cry for help. Mm. I would not ask. Though they anxiously search for me, they will not find me. I never want to get in that place that God gets so angry with me. So disgusted with me. You know, I, <clears throat> I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for over 20 years. I made plenty of mistakes. I don't pretend like I'm Superman. I don't pretend like I'm spiritual 24-7. I've missed the voice of God. I've been disobedient to his word. I didn't respond when he wanted me to respond. But I went back and repented. God forgive me. I start seeing disaster hit my life. And when things, and it's not that God will bring disaster on you sometimes. Sometimes it's just the enemy is attacking you. And sometimes I had to go back and say, God, I know I didn't do right. I know I didn't respond to you when you wanted me to respond. Forgive me, Lord. Don't let this disaster take me under. Don't let this disaster destroy my life. Don't let this calamity wipe me out. 
He says when they cried for help and in that sense. You never want to be on that side of God because you was too busy to hear the voice of God. Right now I'm speaking to somebody you know God is dealing with you. Even to step out of ministry. Even to launch and begin to do what God told you to do in your heart. Sometimes you say, I don't have a ministry. I'm not called behind the poor pit. That's not just ministry. That you, that's so limited. Ministry is advancing the kingdom of God and serving God. Serving your neighbor. Sharing the word of God. Helping the homeless. Helping the poor. Being helped to seniors. Glory to God. Giving. Sometimes you can't do the ministry, but you can help finance the ministry. Sometimes you can say to the church who has an outreach ministry, who feeds the poor, who, who put clothes on the homeless, maybe you can't, maybe because of your schedule you can't, but you can go give a few dollars to that ministry. Maybe you can go in that closet, clothes you don't even wear no more because you can't fit, Take it down to an agency that gives clothes out and give them that suit to bless somebody else. You see, God calls us to do so much. He calls us to, be, to forgive. And we tell God, I will never forgive them. Hmm. Let's keep reading this lesson. You still with me today? You are in tune with Maybe let me go do a commercial because I want you to come back next week. Share this with somebody that you, right now you're receiving the word of the Lord and you are in tune with Greg Tatum's ministry broadcast TV. And what I'm saying today to you is that God is saying through the Holy Spirit, don't ignore me when I call you. Let's look at verse 29. He said, for they hate knowledge and choose not to fear the Lord. What does the word fear mean to reverence? For they hate knowledge. People hate the knowledge of the word of God. They hate knowledge of what God is saying. They hate what God is speaking in their hearts. They don't want the knowledge of God. They don't want to retain the knowledge of God. They don't want to live by the knowledge of God. They think by ignoring the knowledge of God that they won't have to give an account. But there's a saying when I went to court one day that a judge taught me and he still gave me my fine. A situation happened and I said, Judge, I didn't know. I didn't know. I honestly made a mistake. I didn't know. And he said to me, ignorance of the law is no excuse. He still gave me my fine and I still had to go over there and pay that hundred dollars. You see, just because you refuse in the knowledge of God, you won't listen to the knowledge of, of the word of God, you won't be inquire of what God, how God wants us to live, that's not an excuse when you meet the master. He's going to say, you hated knowledge. You refused to get my knowledge. You chose not to fear the Lord. You chose not to reverence the Lord. Do you know I have met Christians who reverence their jobs more than the Lord? Yes, that's true. How do I know this? Well, let's look at this. Let me give you an example. There's Christians who will make it to work five times a week on time. Stay if the boss asks them to stay to get that overtime. But when it comes to the things of God and the house of God, they always late for service. And then they say, well, God understand. Yes, that is a true statement. He understands you reverence that job more than his house. You see, when we come to church on time, that's, it's a form of honoring God. It's a form of respect to God. It's a form of saying, God, I'm ready for prayer and worship and giving and receiving the word of the Lord. But when you come on time, and I'm talking about people who practice being late. I'm not talking about every now and then you, you, you run late, a situation comes up. I'm talking about people who practice. They know their church service and their local location start at 10. They start getting ready at 9.30. They get there at 11. 
Service started at 11. They started getting ready. Some at 11. To get there at 12, 15. But come that next day to go to work. That starts at 8.30. They leave out on time. They drive on time. They get the train or the bus on time. They get there about 8.20. So they can be 10 minutes early and get the cup of coffee and set up and ready to start that job. How do you think God feels when you are the man five times a week with your time? You know, time is the most precious commodity we have. Time is the most precious thing. We, that is one thing we can never, ever get back. And you are a man with time. You show him respect. But when it comes to the things of God, you come in whenever you want. And you believe God is supposed to accept that. No, he, he's not going to accept that. I come to tell you today, when he calls you, don't ignore him. Let's keep going. Let's feel the Lord. Let's feel the Lord in our lifestyle. Let's feel the Lord in how we walk. You know, as Christians, we're not of the world. We don't supposed to live like the world. We don't supposed to act like the world. We don't supposed to do the things of the world like they do. Sure, God allow us to have entertainment, and He allow us to enjoy our families. Matter of fact, it's His health that allow us to enjoy our families. It's His wealth that allow us to enjoy our families and entertainment. But there's a line that the Christian goes to. That the world has no boundaries. We feel the Lord by what we say and how we live. We're not out there just doing anything, hurting people, living any type of life. Why? Because we know the Spirit of the Lord lives inside of us. So it says, you choose not to feel the Lord. Sometimes you want to say something to a person that's really tell them off. Truth be told, you want to curse them out. But there's a, there's a conviction in your heart by the Holy Spirit that says, hold your peace. Don't let those words come out of your mouth. And because you feel the Lord, you hold your peace. See, that's the fear of the Lord. That's the reverence of the Lord. You can go and cheat somebody as you are in, in business for yourself. You can overprice the jobs. The job is worth $600, but you tell them it's a 1000 They don't know. But because you what? Feel the Lord. Because you what? Reverence the Lord. You're not cheating people because you're a contractor. You're a mechanic. You know, as mechanics, they used to say, people used to say, don't let a, a woman go to the mechanic shop by herself. They're going to try to get her. But because you're a Christian man or a Christian woman, if the job costs $600, that's what you're going to charge. You're not going to see a woman or a senior or elderly and put a couple of uh, extra hundred dollars on the why You feel the Lord. You're going to follow the rules of our government. And then sometimes we have to pray when they violate the word of the Lord and, and ask God how to handle that. But those are in authority. The Lord told us to pray for them and be obedient to. Why? Because... We reverence the Lord. You see, every day we have an opportunity to reverence the Lord. Reverence the Lord is not just when your hands in church. And you say, Lord, I love you, Lord, I worship you. Every day. Let's go on to verse 30. I know this has been a hard lesson and I'm, my time is almost up, but I thank you for yours. Verse 30 says, they rejected my advice. Wait a minute. Didn't we see that before? Didn't we see that like in verse 25? Why is God repeating this? This must really be serious to God. Because in verse 30 says, They rejected my advice and paid no attention when I corrected them. Oh, wait a minute. He just read that. So God is adamant in what he said. God is really frustrated when he says, you keep rejecting my advice, but then you want me to get you out of trouble. Oh, God. How many parents have tried to give their children advice, don't go there, don't hook up with them, don't fellowship with them, you don't want to get involved in that? Please stay away from over there.
please stay away. Please come in the house when it's early. Don't come in at 3 o'clock in the morning. There's no good things in the streets at 3 a.m. in the morning. How many times parents have given advice to their children and then when the child gets in trouble, when the child override the advice and get in trouble from the police station, they call and mom at 2 o'clock in the morning, she's panicking. Why? Ma, can you come get me? I'm in trouble. Where are you? I'm at the jailhouse. Then she rushed down there and go, come get you. Why did they lock you up? Oh, we called him with such and such group. And we know they was doing some things that was illegal. How frustrating it is to you as parents to know that your children reject your advice and pay no attention when you try to correct them, but then when they get in trouble, who do they call? That's how God feels today. That's how the Holy Spirit feels. Lord, help me. And the Lord be saying, I tried to at first. I tried to give you good counsel and good advice. I sent you teachers, preachers. I sent you counselors. But you ignore my voice. Let me finish this out. I think I'm down to a few minutes. They got to show me my time. He's, he, he continued to say, but whoever hearkened to me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet for fear of evil. They shall be safe. I'm going to leave this with you today. Don't ignore God. When God is calling you, don't ignore I tell you, this lesson was tough on me. Because I found myself in this lesson wanting to do what I wanted to do. Say what I want to say. Get back to God when I want to get back. There's things that God told me to do years ago. I procrastinated. But when I got any help, I ran to God. I want to pray for you today because I want you to know this is not a good place to be in. The consequences of ignoring God. It's so severe that you, you want God on your side every single day, every battle. The enemy laughs when we be disobedience because he knows we're going to provoke God to not respond to us. I want to pray for you and I thank you for joining Greg Jacobs Ministry Broadcast Television. You can send us information, P.O. Box. 2124 Matson, Illinois. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you and you want to be a blessing to us, you can send uh, your donations and your contributions, your prayer letters, P.O. Box 2124 Matson, M A T T E S O N, Illinois, 60443. You can email us at Ministry at gmail.com. You can contact us, 312. 8014837. You can go onto our Facebook page, Greg Jacobs Ministry, for our upcoming prophetic services, healing services. Um, and so we thank you. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you. We pray and we repent, Lord, for all the times we ignored your call. For all the times we you reached out to us but we was too busy. We ask you to forgive us. We ask you to help us to be sensitive to the voice of the Lord. We ask you, Lord, that if you call us in the midnight hour, we will say, here am I, Lord. What is it that you want me to do? Here am I, God. Speak to my soul and my heart and tell me what to say. Lord, we thank you as we repent it for our ignorance for our defiance, for our rebelliousness, we are ready to hear your voice. And we are ready to do what you want us to do. God bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen.